Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the Hoover Public Library Gallery's Artist Talk series. My name is Jennifer, and I manage the galleries program at HPL. And today I would like to welcome and introduce the students of the Alabama School of Fine Arts. Their painting exhibition will be on view for the months of June and July via Instagram. And um, thank you so much to everybody for coming. And I will now hand over the reins to visual arts faculty member, Anne Herbert. Um, Anne is an artist as well. She's a painter, and she also manages the Vulcan Gallery at ASPA. And so welcome, Anne. And she's going to introduce her students, and they're going to talk about their work. Um, hello. Thanks for coming, you guys. This is, um, this is a really great opportunity for us to try out artist talks um, online and it's actually officially summer now so you guys have really gone the extra mile to come and do these talks. I've been teaching at ASPA for five years. This is my fifth year and every spring semester I have the 10th grade class for two classes both drawing and oil painting and it just over the past few years has become this really great opportunity for me to get to know you guys creatively really well by the end of the year and also um, you're about to transition into the 11th grade. The 11th grade is the time when assignments kind of stop coming in and you have to kind of decide a little bit more independently and with a greater sense of uh, focus what your personal research is gonna be about. So I just think having an exhibition and doing something professional like these artist talks is just a really great opportunity for you to kind of mark that transition. So I really am appreciative of the, those of you who have come to do this today. It's gonna be fun. All right, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna first go through all of the images that um, we've kind of gathered from everybody um, in your class um, that will be part of this exhibition. Um, and so I'll just kind of go from those from start to finish and then I'll go through you guys one by one and you can just kind of describe or talk a little bit about one of your pieces, okay? Okay, can everybody see that all right? Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll through these images. Um, these first two are Damien Cooper's. Ella Yatabe. Emily Moore. Emily again. Faith. Panino. She's here with us. Another of Faith's paintings. Hope Panino also with us. This is a detail of this piece of hopes. You can see zoomed in a little bit clearer what she's got, um, like the materials she's using and uh, what she's drawn here on the record. Self-portrait by hope. Jillian Sepalaran. Another piece by Jillian. Sorry. 
Kara Theert. One more by Kara. Madison, the host. I actually don't know how to read. This is a digital drawing or a combination of an ink drawing with digital put into a digital format. An oil painting by Madison. And one more digital piece by Madison. Monroe Smith. Another one of Monroe's. Riley Gamble. Riley's with us. Another one by Riley. Val Rainey. Val's with us. We'll be doing some talking today too. And then this slide and this slide are a series by Val. And I think that's everything. Yeah. So I guess since we're here, should we start with um, talking with you, Val? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk first, I guess. Do you, which um, images do you want to look at? Or you want to talk about both set or the painting and the ink or what um, would you? I'm fine with talking about either, I don't, yeah, whatever, whichever ones you guys are most interested, interested in. Okay. Um, I guess let's do the um, ink paints. Okay. Uh, so, I, let's see, like, right after quarantine, I went to Michael's, like, off the bat to get a few supplies that I might have left at school or um, I, did, I was running out of. And they had these, like, buy one, get one 50% off, uh, or buy one, get one free sketchbooks. And so I got one 8 by 10 and... Then I got this tone tan sketchbook, which I really didn't know what to do with. Um, but when I got it, I started doing these ink paintings and then like off the bat, uh, sort of, um, I guess maybe as a way to count down the days of quarantine. It's also sort of, uh, it's both like technical practice and this documentation of my life through imagery. I, as I was doing them, I was sort of thinking about um, how, like, how Snapchat works, sort of, which is a really weird, um, really weird relationship, but, they, but they're sort of related in a way because on Snapchat, you have these images that people send to each other called streaks. Um, they're like daily things and you send, you send these daily images to your friends and they only last for a day. They go away like all Snapchat photos do. Um, but the photos don't really mean anything. They're really, they're usually just some stupid photo of what you're doing or, or some, or with an, with an emoji or like some text and you send it off. And it really doesn't have any meaning, but it's, it doesn't have any meaning except for the fact that it's this sort of 
it's this documentation of saying, hey, I'm still, I, I'm alive. It's basically like you have, in a world that's so digital, especially right now, when we're not meeting each other in real life, you, you feel like you have to have some sort of documentation to show other people that you exist still in a way. Um, and that's really where these are coming from. So they're not, the, the images themselves don't really have any, um, don't really have a lot of concept or context, but there are these sort of these small glimpses into my life uh, or into um, the things that I'm perceiving during quarantine. Um, yeah, they just, that's basically it. There's really no thought process into making them per se. It's more of just making them for the documentation. Nice, yeah. nice. And, and I'll say that these are just four of a much lar larger series. So when, you know, that idea of a daily kind of checking in um, or record, just a little snapshot. And these kind of have a feeling of being kind of like intimate snapshots. You know, they're kind of closely cropped and the nature of ink is that there's no erasure really. So when you're working, you're, you're kind of committing every mark that you make. So they have this spontaneity to them. Um, so I think they really embody that all of those, those elements that you were talking about. And I also kind of like the contrast of that they're really inspired by this digital medium, but they're very handmade. So they have, it's a, it's a interesting kind of uh, contrast with, um, you know, the, the digital and the, the analog kind of ways of image making. I think that's cool. Nicely done. Thank you. I'm just gonna scroll back and whoever I hit first. Okay, Riley. Which, um, will you talk with us? Which image do you wanna talk about? Uh, can I start with the um, truth versus reality? You got it. Um, so on this, so this is kind of like, uh, I mean, the prompt was truth versus reality. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it, it's more like the truth is something that'll hurt and it's danger and it can be dangerous sometimes, but it ultimately is, truth and it'll it can set you free as well because once you hear the truth it's something <clears throat> you know that you were either going to hear or have heard before and have ignored and um, once you finally accept it it sort of it'll set you free take you down a path that is ultimately good for you but it looks very scary and it's it looks it's very scary when it comes to reality especially Nice. Do you also want to talk about the other one? Yeah, yeah, that would be fine. Okay. So, um, th this self-portrait, I'm just going to say it's, it's, there's, it's a series. There's two of them. Uh, the other one's not on here, but, and the other one, um, is, it's a lot more, let me just, just kind of describe it. Yes. It's a lot more colorful and, um, it also just, dis it displays, you know, a more, excited happy version of myself but also a little bit reserved and quiet as well but it's a lot more colorful as well and so um the other one would be how I think other people see me this one is how I view myself and I view myself as well and this one is a lot less colorful and that's and plain honestly I made it more plain for a reason because I'm trying to show that I'm not really worth anything i'm only worth who i am because of jesus ultimately and um i it's, I, it's less colorful because I, i'm not trying to give glory to myself i'm not trying to make it seem like i think highly of myself and i i think calmly of myself i'm very calm and content with uh, how i am and that's you know i tried to uh like while i think i see myself as deserving of death I have a slight frown in my face, but I'm also just very content with myself and uh, calm for the most part. Interesting. Um, this painting kind of reminds me of like, um, like an old master portrait, kind of like a Rembrandt painting maybe. Um, 
I do like, you know, there's a, an, you've captured your expression in here and it is a kind of a mix of like seriousness and, but also maybe a little bit of power, um, self-composure um, and strength. And I think that, you know, it's beautifully painted. There's a lot of um, details in there that are really rewarding to look at as a viewer, the way that you've captured these kind of few light hairs there on the left side of your head, you know, um, kind of very subtle and well-observed um, light and shadow throughout. Thank you. And in this piece that you talked about, I, I you know, I love this painting. Um, this is an acrylic painting, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I, I think that you did such a nice job in this with capturing it's, it, it refers to a landscape, but it's, it is definitely seems like more of an internal landscape. So kind of when you are thinking about truth and thinking about the danger of truth, but also the, maybe the, um, the way that truth can set you free, as you said, there is, you know, like you've in, turned that into a place. And I think that that is a really interesting, that you've been able to make a, a space, but it's like a, um, like an internal kind of um, circumstance or landscape. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Monroe, um, do you want to talk with us quickly about yeah, one? Uh, absolutely. Sure. Which piece? I'll start with this one. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is a self portrait based off the prompt of how I see myself. And through this portion, I'm trying to convey a sense of vulnerability and introspection and sort of observing the self down to its very core. Uh, just uh, with this painting, I was trying to analyze really what I am down to my basic elements so there's no no clothes no 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 other distracting elements just the person by themselves because that's what I see myself as is just the person the being so there's the use of the monochromatic palette to kind of simplify things and then a blank background lovely I really love this painting You want to talk about this one too? Yeah, this is for the truth versus reality prompt. And the emotion I'm trying to invoke with this one is the um, the want to not have to view truth or reality, to be blind and ignorant to uh, things like that, because more often than not, those things can be painful to deal with. Right, so avoiding both, kind of a spare yourself. Yeah. One of the things about both of these is that you've been able to use like, just to capture a gesture, to use a gesture and the, the figure to communicate so much um, emotional content. Um, and, you know, that's, it's, it's really well done and, um, I feel like both of these are very powerful um, and you know, they're, they're figurative paintings, but you've, you've, the way you've handled the way the figure is in the composition and the gesture um, really speaks to your concepts that you were talking about. Scrolling back, hope. Oh. Um, which piece um, do you wanna talk about? I can explain both. Okay. So for the record piece, it was the truth versus reality prompt. And in truth, what, what I was inspired by was music because as a human being, I'm a very impressionable person and I think everyone is. 
especially by music. It could be playing in the background and it could be bad music to kind of corrupt your mind or it could be amazing music that you just have to listen to over and over again. So I chose red acrylic paint in the center to represent or like not personify but represent music and it's spreading out and I kind of got the idea from when there's mushrooms growing in the yard they grow from like filth and just they grow from other things and like poop and so the mus the music represents that and things grow from it like humans you get ideas from whatever music you're listening to and then i drew in a white pen along um the circle these little mushrooms and i chose a wasp nest to signify the ideas that can spark from music nice here i'll show the detail again so people can kind of see that i think you know this piece, it's one of something like where, um, you know, a viewer might come in and not immediately know all of that content behind um, the idea, but there are these different objects and images in juxtaposition here that make it very kind of fun to begin to try to um, put things together and make associations and build um, a narrative or an idea, a, a concept um, from it. I really like this piece. Okay, here's your portrait. For my self-portrait, oh, I thought you were on mute, I'm sorry. For my self-portrait, I decided to put my face facing frontwards because I view myself as a confident person and warm tones because I also have a warm personality, but the face is also cast by a shadow I don't think lowly of myself or like sad, but I don't really think about my face a whole lot because even being an identical twin, I'm told that my face is the same as hers. So it's kind of like just another thing that I have. It's not something that how people like inspect their faces like, oh, my lips are special because they're this way. I don't really think like that. So my face is more cast off. Mm. I think that's interesting to, you know, not like I, you're right that a lot of people kind of your identity is very much tied to your face and mm -hmm. kind of obscuring that a little bit, mm -hmm. um, kind of push the identity part away from the rec face facial recognition. Okay. So we can either move on to questions or hope if you want to talk about a piece. Okay. Okay, good. Great. Oh, I want to talk. I want to talk about the nocturne piece, which is like the the prompt was basically doing something uh, at nighttime, and basically, ah, I knocked everything down. But anyways, so basically, during this time, I was like super fascinated with anything at nighttime. I would even go outside and just like lay down, and I. It sounds kind of weird, but uh, the city light. No, the, I mean, the street lights in my neighborhood would fascinate me just because they had this like orange glow and all of this blue. And that fascinated me because they were like complete opposite colors on the color wheel. So I was just, I got this sense of warmth and I wanted to replicate um, almost like warmth and a hope in like a dark environment, which is kind of like a, like a mysterious, um, you don't really know what's lurking. I wanted to get that kind of uh, feeling from it with a lot of, I tried to use texture to kind of get this feeling of like a uh, deepness or like a lot. So that's really it with this piece. Nice. I love this painting. Um, I think that you were able to, even though, you know, if you were to kind of like break this painting down into percentages, so much of it is black or dark. Um, but it's still got so much energy throughout it. And it does feel like it is very much alive. And um, it's, you know, all of this movement in the paint strokes and also the trees and um, 
linear forms in it. And um, I just think it does capture kind of a, that sense of um, sort of the mystery of nighttime and um, how your world is some, some world that's maybe totally known to you in the day becomes a different place uh, at night. It's really good. Okay, so now I'm gonna open it up to all you guys and I'm just gonna kind of go through these questions that Jennifer um, sent to y'all. And you know, some people might have an answer and some people might not and that's all right. Just whatever you kind of feel like uh, you have a response to. Um, so um, the first question is, as artists, the other artists that we look at and absorb have an enormous impact on our identities and on how we make work. What artists or artists most influence you? It could be a visual artist, it could be musical. Um, maybe it's not an artist at all. Maybe it's something like, you know, boxing. I don't know, um, but, but sort of what do you kind of absorb and do you feel like it kind of influences your work? Um, I guess I'll, I guess I'll step in here. Okay. Um, I have a lot of contemporary artists that I really enjoy looking at their work. Um, they're, they have very inspiring work. Um, a few that I can name off the top of my head, I believe. Chloe Wise is a really good one. She's an artist based in New York. She's a Canadian artist, but she's based, she's based in New York now. Um, she's a really good one. Jenna Beavers, I believe that's how you say her name, uh, or Gina, Gina Beavers. She's a really good artist, uh, too. She does these, like, oil paintings that are really, like, super, or, no, they're acrylic paintings, but they're super thick acrylic paintings. Like, they come off the canvas, and it's really interesting. Um, Doran Langberg, I believe, is, an, is another one. Really interesting. So, yeah, there's a lot of different contemporary artists that I pretty much follow all of them on Instagram, but they're really just interesting and um, really inspiring. Most of them are usually two-dimensional artists, but I also like, I also like artists that have three-dimensional work and sculptures. Um, I think that they're kind of, in, they're kind of talking me into sort of going on sort of the sculpture side of things. I kind of want to try out some maybe three-dimensional work soon. Maybe want to get back to school and have some yeah. better resources but um you find them on instagram you kind of like oh uh, yeah and I, I listen to a bunch of podcasts or i follow a bunch of museum pages a lot of them shown like at the moma or the whitney or places like like uh, pl places like that so um i just kind of find them throughout and yeah and then i have some older artists too like um, that inspire me technically, I guess. Um, um, John Single Sargent, and I really, I'm about to butcher this name, I think, but um, it's, it's French, so it's like Georges, uh, the last name is really weird. I'm trying to think of it. It's really, he painted the night, um, he painted the night painting, like K-A-K-N-I-G-H-T, Night of Flowers. I believe it's what's called. It's if really Tyndall were here, she could tell us. But she could tell us. I cannot pronounce. I cannot pronounce his last name to save my life. So I'm not going to try. Um, so yeah. Nice. Anybody else? Um, I yeah yeah actually I have a couple. Um, like one that I guess influence influences me still is like um, like it started when I went to the muse museum in Florida, I think, the Salvador Dali Museum. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was really uh, amazing for me. I, I love that. And also, um, I'm influenced, like, um, non, I mean, non, like, visual art artists, but, like, flankoid, flankoid, eh, <laughs> flank, no, okay, Frank Lloyd Wright, here we go, that is, yeah. okay, that is a tongue twister. Um, yeah, I mean, like, um, I'm also interested in architecture a lot, so that's, but, like, in visual arts as well so it's and I and I feel like uh in nature as well that's one thing that I really connect with him on and uh and you know aside from all of that like I'm also influenced a lot by God and every single piece of my art and you know I'd say he's the ultimate artist honestly but 
yeah, those are like my three main things. I'm also very open to many other artists. Like, um, yeah, just like, I mean, I'm very open to, I don't know. I mean, I really do like Frank Lloyd Wright though. That's, that's what yeah. I'm You've liked that since you applied for ASFA and you know, you were a little um, guy and you had on the Frank Lloyd Wright <laughs> Holly water shirt. Yes. I still have that, but like, it, it's like a white t-shirt so it's like completely a different color now yeah okay guys we're actually approaching the time limit so i'm gonna we may just end up just doing this question so do you guys other people have um sort of influences or things that you kind of think about when you're making your work we got three minutes okay right. so whenever i do our work it's not more so like i'm inspired by a visual artist I'm more inspired by like maybe I watch a lot of dancing videos and so I get inspired by dances and I get inspired by memories also and music like it, if I hear like a good song I'm just like ooh I gotta paint that yeah. Nice. yeah you know I'm actually kind of like similar in that way or in that aspect I get inspired a lot by my thoughts but Mainly I get inspired by my faith in Christ and my relationship with him, or like a lot uh, from scripture. And, and I'm not so much visual artists now, but like I'm getting more into like artists and I, I wasn't used to be like, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely something that, that kind of grows as you learn and you start kind of saying, oh, I like that person. I wonder what gallery they're represented by and who are these other artists and, you know. Monroe, do you want to kind of? Um... Yeah, I take great influence from uh, movies and cinematography because I'm very interested in how uh, uh, lighting and mood and positions can really affect how people are attracted to viewing things like movies and just moving pictures in general, you know, the, the main form of media that people are attracted to now. And I kind of like observing what makes that media attractive and then moving it into something stationary, something drawing, painting, but just observing the techniques used in movies and stuff. Yeah. I love that. And I can so see that in your work. Like when you say that now, I think that you know, you, I can see a real influence, like a, a drama, a sense of drama um, and cinematography in your, in your drawings and paintings. Well, thanks guys so much for doing this and um, participating um, in the talk and the exhibition. And um, thanks Jennifer for putting it all together. And um, hopefully we'll see each other in person one day. And, um, I really look forward to sharing your work on Instagram and I really appreciate you, um, your willingness to show your work um, and the effort that you put into dedicating your time to making this work too. And thank you so much for coming today. Thank you, Anne, that was wonderful. Thank you, Val and Monroe and Hope and Faith and Riley um, and Karen, our parent. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Be safe. Have a good summer. Yeah. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thanks.